All right, so we are doing Daredevil vlogs. Uh, Finally. <laughs> yes, everyone's been telling me to do this. Uh, People keep asking me, have you ever Doug seen Daredevil? And I'm like, I've seen Daredevil. Are you going to make Doug watch Daredevil? I'm like, I am going to make watch Doug do Daredevil. Are you going to make him do vlogs? I am going to make him do vlogs. And watch here we Doug are. Doug do Daredevil. How'd that work again? You had such a good, good thing going there I'm, that you just hey, put it on there. You know what? Um, I have needs. Some people okay. can't see. Okay. Specific can't taste. Uh, and we should point out right now, uh, because there's only 13 episodes of Daredevil, uh, that after we are going to do probably the most asked vlog series I've gotten, like, yet. Uh, Matilda, the animated series. Yes, finally. <laughs> no, we are going to do Steven Universe after this. Uh, so I thought I'd just throw it out there so you can stop fucking asking. That is the other question. <laughs> Good I God! Time. Have you ever Doug seen Steven Universe? Uh, I, I have seen some of Steven Universe. Are you going to make Doug watch Steven Universe? I will make Doug watch. I've actually seen Doug more than you of Steven Universe, Steven. though. I am going yeah. to make it. No, I mean, that that's something I wanted. Because, honestly, I did see an episode or two, and I was like, this is, I can do a vlog series of this. It's actually very quite intriguing. But he, this is going off of his recommendation. Have you and, well, pretty much regular fucking, show? <laughs> <laughs> fucking everybody's recommendation to see this show. Everyone's going to I told you for. first. Uh, no, that's true. Yeah, you told me before everyone else. And uh, so here we are, uh, finally going to talk about uh, this show. A huge hit on Netflix. Everyone's going fucking nuts for this. And As we're just going to do it uh, episode by episode. He's seen the entire show. I have not. We're just doing episodes. Episode uh, one here. Um, I mean, sh should I even compare it at all to the movie? Um, it's probably kind of <laughs> what pointless. movie. Um, that was my first thought when I saw the first episode. Was I'm like, oh well, what Daredevil movie now? Like it just pisses all over that Daredevil. Movie I, I will. I will say this. Smug sense of superiority. I will say this for all the people that are always like, I like Daredevil. What's wrong with you? I, now can you see what's wrong? Can, can, <laughs> I'm sure the director's cut the, is better. That's what everyone says. Does an example of a good Daredevil production help you? Everyone says the director's cut is better, and I believe you. I haven't seen it yet, but no, we will. You can we still will talk about. It. I, we will talk about because there, I, amazingly, there are a couple things in the Affleck Daredevil movie that I kind of like that I wish this show picked up on a little more, actually. So, but. Overall, the show's way back. Yeah, well, let's talk about this episode. This, uh, you know, I I'd be lying if I said, like, right from the beginning I was hooked. I wasn't, but I think the stuff it does that is not only different from the movie, but very reminiscent kind of, like, of early 90s and especially 80s cinema uh, is that every everything... Really violent. Well, not just the violence. Uh, the... The origin story right now with comic book movies, because there are so many of them, has kind of been done to death. Uh, and now it's funny that going back now uh, to having somebody in a mask, a superhero outfit, fighting crime, who was that guy? And then you'll find out the story later is actually kind of new again, because we haven't seen it in a while. It's so people just want old the school, story. it's become new school again. Yeah. I, I um, totally agree with so, you. So you do get the backstory that, you know, the, he, he was a kid, and it happened to him when he was a kid, and he sort of talks a little bit about his dad being a fighter, but that's about it. You don't see too much else, and you know there's more to it. You know, they don't even really say about him, like, getting his powers or anything. You just know they well, got his, hit with this Even the, the cheapness of his costume. He's running around like the Dread Pirate Roberts. Yeah. Like, he looks um, like Todd in the Shadows, kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so simple. But, uh, so you kind of got this going on, and some of it is, is a little textbook, like, you know, the best friend, uh, or, or the partner, I should say, also being the best friend. Who's this smart just foggy in my presence. Um, and, uh... You know, and the build-up to this crime guy you don't see yet, and sort of the crime business meetings and stopping the drug rings and stuff. Um, but there is this... There's a grittiness that doesn't quite go too far. It, it just meets the right amount of uncomfortable, but not in your face, like, we're trying to be disturbing, we're trying to be shocking. It's just the right amount of, of what's needed, and it creates an environment where it's accepted. That was one of my problems with the movie, is that... When they would talk about, like, you know, another rape victim on the street, you see a woman crying over this cartoon gangster. Saying, yeah, we met, had a little fun. And he has to listen to his fucking heartbeat to figure out if yeah. he's lying. Where with this woman, you know, who they're the villain whether or not to take the case, it makes not, sense. Yeah. It makes sense to listen to her heartbeat to see if she's telling the truth. 
And well, because she was found over a body holding a butcher knife. With no, blood th all but that's what I mean. That's a yeah. point where it makes it. Well, unlike the movie where it's clear, it's yeah. fucking clear. You need to guilty. listen to that dude's yeah. heartbeat in the movie. Like you could just tell. Like the audience could tell. It was just a cartoony scene. Yeah, it, it, it was a. He's using it for legitimate purposes. <laughs> so I mean, I think people were sort of getting the the wrong idea that it's like you can't. You know, like we were saying, you can't be dark in a superhero movie you would please do we would love it but it has to be stepped oh, yeah. up and this does step it up well and the grittiness is something that a lot of directors and production designers and cinematographers don't understand they don't know how to do it right uh, you know the best example is man of steel where people were like it's gritty oh it's so gritty it's not it's gray like, there's a difference between just desaturating your film and actually making your film actually gritty. This is a thousand times more gritty. And there's tons of color all over this show. It, you know, it's it, you were telling me, it, was, it reminds you a lot of Sin City and Watch, I can definitely see you're talking about, where the yeah. silhouettes and the shadows are so strong, but there is still color shining through. Yeah, it's, uh, shining it, down it on is them. always, it's black, white, and some oversaturated color. It is not a colorless movie and there's a ton of shadows like half it makes tim burton's batman look like it was shot on the surface of the sun because i mean so much of this uh show is just shot in the shadows sometimes got in the but way i had to ask a few times like wait who is that guy I couldn't see who that guy was who is that you know did he fight him this so it sometimes gets, it's it a gets better because seeing this episode again um for a second time now i'm like yeah, it's a little... The fights do get better. Wait, wait, what? wait till the end of episode Well, no, but, but that's a funny thing about the fights, is that... And this was but I mean, the way they're, they're, they're shot and the lighting gets a little better. You can yeah, follow but, them a bit But easier. the interesting thing about the, uh, the fighting choreography is that, um, you know, they're doing stunts and they're doing flips and stuff like that, but the actual hitting feels real. It feels like, you know, where you have something like Fight Club where they're not really like doing movie fighting. It looks like they're just hitting each other. Kind of like how really guys in real life would hit each other, you know, just... You know, like that. It's not stylized. It's not good looking. It's just It's clumsy. ugly. A lot of times yeah. it's just ugly. It, it, like, it's, a it's good ugly. fist fight should no. have this ugliness Well, no, but it. what I like about it, but then you have something kind of... Even though I do I like the fighting in Daredevil, it, it's way too polished. It's comic book, and that's fine. It was a comic book movie. Um, where in this one, it's kind of like a mix. It's very UFC. Uh, where it's like, if they can do the stuff, it, they yeah. can do flips, but they're really fucking hitting each other. Yeah. And it Anything looks like they can really do to win the it. fight, they'll do it. And he does have martial arts experience so he's doing that these other guys are probably just you know learned street fighting basically and it's it, it is funny because you can see depending on who he's going against i think there was care taken in the fights to put him up against different people sometimes it'll be two martial artists together him versus another martial artist other times it's a street thug and the fights change and kind of adapt depending on it which is fun to watch well and the guy he's fighting at the end of this one you know he falls to the ground with this guy, he's got him, and he falls to the ground, and they keep like they keep kicking and hitting while they're on the yeah. ground. And it's kind of like that. That's probably what I would do. Yeah, <laughs> you no, know, it's not like you know, and then do a flip to get back up, and then start fighting. You know, it's no, you would kind of like just when you're in a fight, like you said, you'll fucking do anything to win it, and that's what you do. You just you keep going. You got energy. Okay, keep going, keep going. So I like it's a good mix of nicely stylized, but also kind of clumsy in a sense where it looks like the impact is real and the sound is good. Well, and the, even... cin the cinematography is the same. Like, that's it's nicely stylized and also looks kind of clumsy. It's what This is what I wish uh, uh, Les Miserables cinematography was more like. Because I'm like, it's handheld all over the place. But I'm like, the shots are well composed and make sense. There's not some random Dutch angle just because, hey, I want to show you half a mm -hmm. ceiling. Like, it, it's, it's still handheld and, you know, that sort of intimate gritty sort of like almost like documentarian cops kind of feel but they're still good shots well you know something that you know you're talking about the handheld and i think this is a good example of not only how it can be done well but how it can also make a scene where really nothing is going on there's a scene where the woman's telling like her whole story and backstory and what was on this file and stuff like that I mean, karen that's, her name is karen yeah that, that's a long like what, 10 minutes of just these three that we're looking at and no action is happening at all and we're in the same room and they're not moving. It's pretty much just her talking. And they do it well because, hey, they got a pretty good act, pretty good actors in this. I mean, they, they hold it she, their own The funny thing well. is that's not how I imagined Karen from the comics necessarily, but I think she does a really good job. So it's one of those where I'm just like, 
Yeah, I, I, like, this is a little different, but they pull it off. And, like, the things where they do switch things up, I generally think the show pulls it off really well. So. But on top of that, I think we're always, we say this over and over, show, don't tell. You know, and th there's a lot of talking in this scene, but there's a sense of, because it is so well handled, you know they're going to show as well. And they have been showing the murders, and they have been showing the grittiness, so that when somebody sits down and is just talking, and you're holding on that shot for a while, you know, like, Okay, something important is being said, and I really need to listen, and they say it in a way where you want to listen. Uh, so it, it's a good combination, I feel. Yeah, the uh, only... It's not too much of one thing. It is funny, because, like, I, I've seen this episode, so I showed a couple friends as well. So I've seen this episode, now uh, this is number three, maybe four. So I've seen this episode, the first four episodes, a bunch of times. The only thing that kind of, like, I'm looking back, I'm like, okay, what's critical eye? What, is there any weakness in this? Um, from a writing perspective, it's that confession scene in the beginning. Each time, like, every time I see it, I get a little more bored with it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure, and I'm, it's not spoiling anything. Like, he'll go back and talk to that priest again. So, I mean, it, we know that's coming anyway, but I, I kind of always watch him like, I like the idea this scene just goes on, though. He's Talking, 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 talking. You know, himself. and I'm like, it almost worried me when I first saw this for the first time. That scene kind of almost worried me, like, eh, this is gonna be really talking. This is good, but this may just be really talking. And then, like, the show, like, completely saved itself, like, right after that. No, actually, but when... it's the only moment, yeah, that I'm like, huh, it's the only I... weak point for me in this episode. You know, uh, that, and I have to be honest, when the partner came up, sort of with his exposition ish dialogue, like, it's not like, painfully bad or anything, but it's the same thing where it's like, well, I... When I sort of said, this is, you Foggy know, sort of... on you. No, 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 it's <laughs> not that... It, no, it's very... No, the writing that wasn't scene, helping. That scene with the confession, and, and even even to some extent the kicking him with the chemicals early and stuff like that, I was kind of saying, okay, this, this isn't bad, but uh, it's, see, it's by was, the book. I thought that scene was flawless. Just no. it, it Just because it just felt it told you everything you needed to know and there was an intensity to it right away it wasn't just <laughs> no no I wasn't oh, saying I got, that. It, yeah it, it it wasn't just oh i i got hit in chemicals it was like <laughs> it hurts, oh, dear god get it out of my eyes I was no like, oh, I, no shit. no I, I thought it was well done it, how do i say it? it's that it's because i think it has been done sort of so often even with Daredevil, because i know the story too but that's again I wouldn't know a way around that. This is probably the best there's thing some, you can do. There's with some it. tropes you just need. Yeah, you, you can't know, get like around it. You know, it, I, some I, things I get just, it. I will go with the tip. That's why I'm saying it's not bad. It's that yeah. well, okay, but no, I agree. I thought that was a really good no, start. Foggy's introduction, like I actually legitimately like the character. You grow to, at least I did grow to really like him. Um, I liked him more when he was talking seriously. When he was talking like a lawyer. Yeah, and he and like. That intro was not his best moment. There's a couple moments in the course of the series where I love the actor, I, I I love the character, but there's a couple of weak moments over the course of the series. That was moment number one. There's moment number two, well far from now, where I thought, eh, but we'll get to that when it comes. Well, and the funny thing, too, watching this, uh, you know, I, I got through Better Call Saul this year. They, they, they ran the season. And I'm not a lawyer. I don't like lawyer shows. I don't get into them, but I like ones that do something kind of different, have a different angle, and Better Call Saul is one of them, and really, I mean, this one, yeah, it's a comic book show, but they, they address the legalese, too, you know, they're not like, oh, well, they're dumb kids, they don't want to hear the legal stuff or anything, it's like, they're treating it as adult, because there has been this big boom, you know, with comic book movies, and adults want to take it more seriously as well, uh, that they're allowed to take this time to actually talk this stuff, but talk in a way where it's interesting, it doesn't just feel like we're saying you know, important-sounding stuff where you go, you know, mm -hmm, well, that sounded important, so, you know, must be. You know, we can follow it. Um, and, yeah, and I like how, the, the, you know, Murdoch is... I, I do not read... I haven't read Daredevil. I Really, the most I know about is probably the first movie. <laughs> I know very little about Daredevil. I'm sorry. I, I mean, yeah, you, you grew up reading Daredevil. I mean, you know all about it. Um, so I didn't even know, like, that woman was going to be a main character. You know, I thought maybe this was just... Oh, shit. Sorry, maybe know. I spoiled that for you. Well, oh, no, no, no. As soon as she says, you know, I can help out, I can help her. It's like, well... Yeah, okay, I guess the, the be, show. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, so it's one of those things where I don't know the character that much going in, but I think it's all the more reason why you have to kind of 
create that essence, that likability very quickly. And I, with the exception of uh, the confession scene, which I, I think you're right, that's too much too early. Uh, you, you should have saved that. Um, it was, I, a li it was a, the sort of pretentiousness that I'm like, I wouldn't have opened with that. I Like, you can get away with a scene like that a little later. You, you're opening or your main character. Or trim it the hell down. I was like, each time I see it, I feel like it gets a little longer. No, you're, And you're, each time I've seen it with friends, you could feel them squirming around a bit. Like, and I'm like, yeah, you don't want that right in the intro. You're there. opening with a guy who has already been represented not very well in a past movie that is infamously, like, everybody yeah. makes fun of and hates this movie. Uh, and you're opening with him, you know, confessing his backstory pretty much and crying and breaking down and it's too much too early it really is and so it it doesn't destroy it because he does it well i think know, they were going but... for broke there a little i think that was part of it like make this dark and gritty dramatic moment like not ben affleck not ben affleck film like as far removed yeah as that's and, one thing i can figure yeah. uh but i like the fact that like it, there is sort of this yeah he's this guy and he's fighting crime and 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 stuff but I think the fact that they start off that she's the first case, I think that's really brilliant. Like, cause you, start, you don't know yeah. how far along has he been doing this for a while, or is he just starting out? or has, How long have you been just, practicing? Huh? Well, what time is it now? It's like five minutes? Uh, yeah. that, that, seven hours? That legit, like, I even had to ask, I'm like, so she's the first case? Like, really? Like, they're, they're doing this? I just did not think they would open well, that you know, cold, and I love that they did. Yeah. I, and, but it also allows them very much I to show... That's their first, because... No, they said first. Uh, yeah, well, I think as their own independent... I don't know, it might be giving stuff away, so I don't want to... Foggy may have had a previous job with another firm before. I don't know. Well, we'll, I did, did we'll two see. of them together, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll um, see. So maybe the two of them together. I don't know if that's their first time practicing law. Well, but bottom line, it's not like they've been doing the lawyer thing for a while and then he got into crime fighting. Yeah, no, they're it's early on. The yeah, they're starting um, there. <laughs> and I like they start that cold in that opening, and I think there is sort of this... It, I... I I, the only way I can describe it is sort of like almost this welcoming comfort to this guy. You feel like you're in good hands with this guy. Like when he talks and and maybe she he's just sincere. nails it. Maybe he it's, he listens. Yeah, she said it. He listens. Of course, he's blind. What else is he gonna no, do? No, no. But, but you know, but I but, think that's part of the character. Is that no, th something th that gave something that the blindness gave him? No, you know, is and that I, sort of empathy and ability to listen. Yeah, so I, I was go gonna ahead. say with. Um, and I again, I know it's pointless compared to the Affleck and stuff, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this comparison because I think this is just good writing in general, and this is just the first thing I jumped to. Uh, Affleck in the first film, he didn't listen. He talked a lot. He monologued yeah. a lot. You heard what he was thinking a lot. And with this one, like he didn't need to say that much, but what he said was short and to the point, and he said it confidently. And I said, you know, I. I trust this guy. Yeah. The, and he'll monologue, but it's done at a... Pro like, the confession. He was monologuing, but that's what you should do. You're in confession. Well, like, and he'll monologue that, at I mean, appropriate... I think we said that, yeah. that was kind of a weaker But scene, he will but. monologue, but at appropriate times. Like, from what I remember seeing it the first time, and we'll see you guys as we watch it the second here, it seemed well-balanced throughout. Like, he's got a silent part to him, but he also will... Yeah, he doesn't say yeah. nothing. I mean, he does talk, but when he does talk, it's important and good yeah. stuff. Foggy, you get the feeling, is the talker yeah. of the two of them. He's the schmoozer, the, you know, whereas Murdoch is the silent type. You know, just listening and collecting everything. And he doesn't say much, but when he does say it, it's profound or to the point. When, you know, when she's really breaking down and saying, look, I gotta go, they're gonna kill you, and if they don't kill you, they're gonna kill me, and stuff like that, and he says... You know, she can stay with me. I, you know, I'll protect her. I'll look after her. And I was waiting for her to say something along the lines of, you know, I, I'd much rather stay with him. He, you know, he's not blind. But at the same time, again, just the way he plays it, she doesn't know he's a crime fighter or anything, but the way he plays it, you sort of go, yeah, no, I would trust that guy. <laughs> you know, I just trust that this guy, you know, he is so confident and so relaxed and so comfortable. You sort of go, yeah, no, I, Foggy, I Well, this is the difference. Foggy is a schmoozer, but I don't think he has quite the same level of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I think Murdoch and the acting just exudes a sense of... You know what? The look on his face always says, I know exactly what I'm doing. Even if he doesn't. Yeah. You know, which is a powerful thing, because people who just 
project that image of like, I know exactly what I'm doing, I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it now, that's a potent thing. Yeah, um, no, definitely. Thank God it's being used for good. Um, we'll find out those who use it for bad later. I do think we should talk about the villains so far, because I am in love with Wesley. <laughs> that guy, is he the, the, the lawyer, the, the lawyer who walks in. I was going to say, is that that guy with the glasses? Yeah, um, <laughs> but yes. No, not that guy with the glasses. But I, like, I just, I love this character. Like, the way he walks in and does the whole thing with the uh, the iPad there, and is like, hey, wave hello to your daughter, give her a call. Like, that whole setup, I'm like, wow, that in a couple minutes there, that told us everything we need to know about this enterprise. They have people everywhere. They will go to any lengths to blackmail somebody. They want favors from people high up, you know, with the cops, and they'll threaten the lives of your children to do it. And have the means to do it. <laughs> well, and I, li I was saying, I actually do like that they've... I mean, horrible to say. I like that they follow through and they did kill the cop. You know, the way and she the brings the laundry up. back. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, one it's of those sad to where... say, but I love the payoff. It's almost a joke, but it's but, but it's I mean, it's it's a payoff to you know what it is. It's a payoff to a scene. Like I'm gonna bring my laundry back this weekend, and then like he's dead at the end. No, it's one of those things where it's rightfully disturbing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want these guys to look like bad guys. They did bad things. And you didn't need too much. You didn't need to see them following or torturing or doing anything. It just him, you know, her her reaction to him being dead. I mean, th that's enough. Yeah. I mean, that, that it, did it. And and you know why you saw the buildup. I mean, that was uncomfortable scene with them looking at the daughter on the, the iPad and everything. If it, were I mean, a comedic, it was, if it were a comedic scene, it would be a topper. Like, it would be the perfect punchline. I mean, it's not. It's dark as fuck, but, I mean, it's just... I kind of respect it as just being so well-written. Like, oh, I just love the payoff of her with the laundry there. And just, ah! You know, I'll say one last thing here um, about it. I think you can tell, you know, that I liked it. Um, is that I was talking about sort of the retro bringing back, you know, just the hero exists, and we don't entirely know the full backstory, and we're going to get more of it as we go on. I mean, we know he got hit with chemicals, but even that didn't really say he gets superpowers from this. I mean, we kind of know, but... Um, is that at the end, something I really miss... And I only see once in a while, and I hope they bring back, because it was something that died out, and it shouldn't have died out, it should stay around, is the montage. Uh, I oh, love, montage, yeah, I yeah. love when they do montages and stuff, and it's such a shame they don't do more of them. And, yeah, I just forgot, it's like, man, does that get me ready for the next one, excited for, you know, what's going down, and I'm thinking of all the times I see a, man, a montage, even in a bad movie, it's like, it's always the they best work. part when they do a montage. They work. Yeah, so uh, please, please um, keep those going. You know, they're just so... When they're edited together and they're done right, they're just so wonderful. The Marvel comic universe references were nice to Hell's Kitchen being blown up by the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, the I would have noticed that if you didn't bring that up. Um, well, they get more obvious with it as it goes on. But I love the concept that these villains are leeching off of heroes. Leland says at some point, he's like, what? We love these guys. They blow up a building somewhere and we're trying to put new ones up. Like... I just, I love that idea. Like, yeah, no, it, it's it, not it, something that I don't think is explored enough. The concept of like, well, you know, the heroes need the villains, you know, to justify their existence. But this is a case where the villains totally need the heroes to cause the damage so that they can, you know, do these racketeering schemes and, you know. No, that was a nice side. touch. Um, um, I love all, I think for me, I was hooked at that scene where all the criminals meet up. Because I just got this sense of... You know of, me too. I got this, I got this <laughs> sense me too. I got this sense of synergy. When all the criminals were there and Wesley was talking to them, and you have the Russian Mafia, you have the uh, Yakuza, I, I'm i assuming Gao represents the triad, the, the you Chinese. You got Patch Adams, uh, teachers. Yeah, we're, we're going to make doctors out of you. Got, yeah, Leland does the money. Like, And when they're all talking together, I got chills when I watched that scene the first time, and I'm like... And you know that, you know, they're all being run by somebody. I mean, I think we can guess if you know anything about Daredevil, but I won't spoil it for you yet. Which, yeah, I wonder who it is. I mean, but I, it's, it's, yeah. it's Dr. Octopus. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Doc Ock is running them all. It's because he's got <laughs> so many... That a good twist. It, it's because he's got so many hands. He's got his hands a little bit of yeah, everything. A little bit of everything. Every criminal yeah. enterprise. But yeah, you, you know what it is? I, I just, yeah, I just got goosebumps. That it, whole scene is handled so... So well. You know, the show, it, like I said, it's being done, you know, it, kind of by the numbers up until that point where it's like, now we're going to give you something a little different. You haven't really seen these kind of crime... I mean, you see the Russian guys, you know, with the peacock and stuff, but I mean, you haven't really seen kind of these villains before. The I haven't seen a Lady Gao. Like, yeah. Kind of, like, I love this old Chinese woman 
running this drug enterprise. Yeah, and I, I love, you know, the guy, you know, just going, you know, no, why are we waiting here? Why blah, blah, blah. And the other guy coming in, not with the boss, but he's very, you know, precise. He reminds me, uh... Yakuza? Uh, the Yakuza guy? The... No, the... Again, that guy with the glasses. Uh, oh, Wesley. Uh, Wesley. Wesley, he reminds yeah. me, remember in Gargoyles, remember Xantos, uh, helper, what the hell's his name? The blonde... Oh, his uh, assistant. Yeah, he yeah, reminds me a no, lot of that. His, well, it's funny you should say that, so it, uh, yeah, that pretty much nails his character. But it's something where I'm sort of watching it, I'm sort of like, you know, yeah, just, now this is kind of different, I like this, and it kind of went off from there, and okay, this is where we're going to be a little different and do things, you know, that are going to make it stand out, because before it, it was good, but it was kind of a typical crime, superhero, whatever. It was done well, but I've kind of seen it before. And then sort of then on, it was sort of taking a few more chances and doing things a little bit more quirky and different. Yeah, that... It is funny, yeah. That is exactly the same scene where I'm just like, this is where... I That scene, I'm like, I'm hooked. I gotta see where this is going, because I just loved this meeting here. Like The other characters kind of had to be set up. They you Them, you just got immediately. You know, yeah. you got, like, their character and their interaction. Well, because I think they're kind of archetypes, other. and they're all based on their actions and mannerisms, but it really works. It's like, I don't need to know anything about these people. I think I just got to figure it out well, looking at them. It's like you like, got a bunch of 80s character actors together yes! in a room. Like, all these guys that could be the villain of their own 80s they films. They act like 80s character actors. They're all just that right amount of over the top where you don't need to be told what their motivation is. You can just look at them. It's like, I get it. Yeah. And I could just watch Wesley do his job all day. I just love him running in, fixing problems, talking in the car, and, you know, oh, yeah, well, uh, don't worry, he just uh, overdosed on drugs, like, an hour ago. Mm. <laughs> He's just leaving this trail of bodies. So, um, yeah, no, a, a good start. Definitely got better as it went along, as most first episodes do, I mean, to be fair. Um, and, uh... Yeah, we're, we're just going to run through these. I can't say exactly when they'll come out. We're just going to do our best. I mean, we will fill May with them, uh, but it's not going to be like, this whole week's going to be nothing but Daredevil. We're just going to do our best. And uh, for anyone wanting more Adventure Time vlogs, again, kind of the same thing. We'll just kind of do our best and fit them in wherever we can. But uh, yeah, Daredevil's a hot thing right now, and everyone's saying, go see it, go see it. and uh, As you should. Yeah, exactly. So and uh, after that, we'll start the Steven Universes, which I'm sure are going to be plenty. Uh, you should. <laughs> yes, but, uh, yeah, right now we got these 13 to go through, so just keep an eye out, just keep coming back uh, whenever we post them, and uh, just keep watching us yap. So, see you in the next one.